Ballad of Douglas Bridge by Francis Carlin Read for LibriVox.org by Dailybub On Douglas Bridge I met a man Who lived adjacent to Straban Before the English hung him high For riding with O'Hanlon The eyes of him were just as fresh As when they burned within the flesh And his boot legs were wide apart From riding with O'Hanlon God save you, sir, I said with fear. You seem to be a stranger here. Not I, said he, nor any man who rides with Count O'Hanlon. I know each glen from North Tyrone to Monaghan. I've been known by every clan and parish since I rode with Count O'Hanlon. Before that time, said he to me, my fathers owned the land, you see, but they are now among the moors. A riding with O'Hanlon. Before that time, said he with pride, my father's road where now they ride as raperies before the time of trouble and O'Hanlon. Good night to you, and God be with the tellers of the tale and myth, for they are of the spirit stuff that rides with Count O'Hanlon. Good night to you, said I, and God be with the chargers fairy shod that bear the Ulster heroes forth to ride with Count O'Hanlon. On Douglas Bridge we parted, but the gap of dreams is never shut to one whose saddle soul tonight rides out with Count O'Hanlon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eros by Ralph Waldo Emerson Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The sense of the world is short, Long and various the report, To love and to be loved. Men and gods have not outlearned it, And how oft so ere they are turned it, not to be improved. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fisherman's Hymn by Alexander Wilson. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. The osprey sails above the ground, the geese are gone, the gulls are flying, the herring shoals swarm thick around, the nets are launched, the boats are plying. Yo ho, my hearts, let's seek the deep, raise high the song, and cheerily wish her, still as the bending net we sweep, God bless the fishhawk and the fisher. She brings us fish, she brings us spring, good times, fair weather, warmth and plenty, fine stores of shad, trout, herring, ling, sheep's head and drum, and old wives dainty. Yo ho, my hearts, let's seek the deep, ply every oar, and cheerily wish her, still as the bending net we sweep, God bless the fishhawk and the fisher. She rears her young on yonder tree, she leaves her faithful mate to mind em. Like us, for fish she sails to sea, and plunging shows us where to find em yo ho my hearts let's seek the deep ply every oar and cheerily wish her while the slow bending net we sweep god bless the fishhawk and the fisher end of poem this recording is in the public domain the green grass under the snow by annie a preston Read for LibriVox.org by Jan McGillivray The work of the sun is slow, But as sure as heaven we know, So we'll not forget, when the skies are wet, There's green grass under the snow. When the winds of winter blow, Wailing like voices of woe, There are April showers, and buds and flowers, and green grass under the snow. We find that it's ever so in this life's uneven flow. We've only to wait in the face of fate for the green grass under the snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Holy Sonnet Two, as due by many titles I resign, by John Donne, read for LibriVox by Vin Riley, September first, two thousand seven. As due by many titles I resign myself to Thee, O God. First I was made by Thee and for Thee, and when I was decayed, Thy blood bought that the which before was Thine. I am Thy son, made with Thyself to shine. Thy servant, whose pains thou hast still repaid, thy sheep, thine image, until I betrayed myself a temple of thy spirit divine. Why doth the devil then usurp on me? Why doth he steal, nay ravish, that's thy right? Except thou rise and for thine own work fight, oh, I shall soon despair when I do see that thou lovest mankind well, yet wilt not choose me. And Satan hates me yet is loath to lose me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Holy Sonnet 10 Death Be Not Proud by John Donne Read for LibriVox by Vin Riley September 1, 2007 Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be, much pleasure, then from thee much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls' delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison, war, and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well, and better than thy stroke. Why swell'st thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If I Should Die Tonight by Bell E. Smith Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jan McGillivray If I should die tonight, my friends would look upon my quiet face before they laid it in its resting place, and deem that death had left it almost fair, and, laying snow-white flowers against my hair, would smooth it down with tearful tenderness, and fold my hands with lingering caress, poor hands, so empty and so cold to-night. If I should die to-night, my friends would call to mind, with loving thought, some kindly deed the icy hands had wrought, some gentle word the frozen lips had said, errands on which the willing feet had sped, the memory of my selfishness and pride, my hasty words, would all be put aside, and so I should be loved and mourned to-night. If I should die to-night, even hearts estranged would turn once more to me, recalling other days remorsefully. The eyes that chill me with averted glance would look upon me as of yore, perchance, and soften in the old familiar way. For who could war with dumb, unconscious clay? So I might rest, forgiven of all, to-night. O oh, friends, I pray to-night, Keep not your kisses for my dead, cold brow. The way is lonely, let me feel them now. Think gently of me, I am travel-worn, My faltering feet are pierced with many a thorn. Forgive, O oh, hearts estranged, Forgive, I plead, when dreamless rest is mine, I shall not need the tenderness for which I long to-night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Let Us Be Merry Before We Go by John Philpot Curran Read for LibriVox.org by Dailybub If sadly thinking, with spirits sinking, 
could more than drinking my cares compose a cure for sorrow from sighs I'd borrow, and hope tomorrow would end my woes. But as in wailing there's naught availing, and death unfailing will strike the blow, then for that reason, and for a season, let us be merry before we go. To joy a stranger, a wayworn ranger, in every danger my course I've run, now hope all ending, and death befriending, his last aid lending, my cares are done. No more a rover, or hapless lover, my griefs are over, my glass runs low. Then for that reason, and for a season, let us be merry before we go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lip and the Heart by John Quincy Adams Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica One day, between the lip and the heart, a wordless strife arose, which was expertist in the art his purpose to disclose. The lip called forth the vassal tongue and made him vouch a lie. The slave his servile anthem sung and braved the listening sky. The heart to speak in vain essayed, nor could his purpose reach, his will nor voice nor tongue obeyed, his silence was his speech. Mark thou their difference, child of earth, while each performs his part, not all the lip can speak is worth the silence of the heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. The Listeners by Walter de la Mare Is there anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor, and a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveller's head and he smote upon the door again a second time. "'Is there anybody there?' he said. But no one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote on the door even louder, and lifted his head. Tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell, echoing through the shadowiness of the still house, from the one man left awake. Ay, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. The Listeners by Walter de la Mare. Read by Ted DeLorme for LibriVox. Love and Sleep by Arthur Simons. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. I have laid sorrow to sleep, love sleeps. She who oft made me weep now weeps. I loved and have forgot, and yet love tells me she will not forget. She it was bid me go, love goes by what strange ways, ah, no one knows. Because I cease to weep, she weeps, 
Here by the sea in sleep, love sleeps. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Delight and Thy Delight by Robert Bridges Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica My delight and thy delight walking like two angels white in the gardens of night. My desire and thy desire twining to a tongue of fire leaping live and laughing higher through the everlasting strife in the mystery of life. Love, from whom the world begun, hath the secret of the sun. Love can tell, and love alone, whence the million stars were strewn, why each atom knows its own, how, in spite of woe and death, gay is life, and sweet is breath. This he taught us, this we knew, happy in his science true, hand in hand, as we stood neath the shadows of the wood, heart to heart, as we lay in the dawning of the day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nemesis by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Already blushes in thy cheek the bosom thought which thou must speak. The bird, how far it haply roam by cloud or isle, is flying home. The maiden fears, and fearing runs into the charmed snare she shuns. And every man, in love or pride, of his fate is never wide. Will a woman's fan the ocean smooth, or prayers the stony parquet soothe? or coax the thunder from its mark, or tapers light the chaos dark. In spite of virtue and the muse, Nemesis will have her dues, and all our struggles and our toils tighter wind the giant coils. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode, inscribed to W. H. Channing, by Ralph Waldo Emerson, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Though loath to grieve, the evil time's sole patriot, I cannot leave my honeyed thought for the priest's cant or statement's rant. If I refuse my study for their politic, which at the best is trick, the angry muse puts confusion in my brain. But who is he that prates of the culture of mankind, of better arts and life? Go, blind worm, go. Behold the famous states harrying Mexico with rifle and with knife. Or who, with accent bolder, dare praise the freedom-loving mountaineer? I found by thee, O rushing Kantukuk, and in thy valleys, Agiokuk, the jackals of the negro holder, the god who made New Hampshire taunted the lofty land with little men, small bat and wren, house in the oak. If earth fires cleave the upheaved land and bury the folk, the southern crocodile would grieve. Virtue palters, right is hence, freedom praised but hid. Funeral eloquence rattles the coffin lid. What boots thy zeal, O glowing friend, that would indignant rend the Northland from the South? Wherefore? To what good end? Boston Bay and Bunker Hill would serve things still. Things are of the snake. The horseman serves the horse. The nethered serves the neat. 
the merchant serves the purse the eater serves his meat tis the day of the chattel weave to weave and corn to grind things are in the saddle and ride mankind there are two laws discreet not reconciled law for man and law for thing the last builds town and fleet and it runs wild and doth the man unking tis fit the forest fall the steep be graded the mountains tunnelled the sand shaded the orchard planted the glebe tilled the prairie granted the steamer built let man serve law for man live for friendship live for love for truths the harmonies behoof the state may follow how it can as olympus follows jove yet do not i implore the wrinkled shopman to my sounding woods nor did the unwilling senator ask votes of thrushes in the solitudes every one to his chosen work foolish hands may mix and mar wise and sure the issues are round they roll till dark is light sex to sex and even to odd the over god who marries right to might who peoples unpeoples he who exterminates races by stronger races black by white faces knows to bring honey out of the lion graf's gentlest scion on pirate and turk the cossack eats poland like stolen fruit her last noble is ruined her last poet mute straight into double band the victors divide half for freedom strike and stand the astonished muse finds thousands at her side end of poem this recording is in the public domain patterns by amy lowell read for LibriVox.org by Brian Ness I walk down the garden paths, and all the daffodils are blowing and the bright blue squills. I walk down the patterned garden paths in my stiff brocaded gown. With my powdered hair and jeweled fan I too am a rare pattern as I wander down the garden paths. My dress is richly figured, and the train makes a pink and silver stain on the gravel and the thrift of the borders, just a plate of current fashion, tripping by in high-heeled ribboned shoes, not a softness anywhere about me, only a whalebone and a brocade. And I sink on a seat in the shade of a lime tree, for my passion wars against the stiff brocade, the daffodils and squills flutter in the breeze as they please, and I weep, for the lime tree is in blossom, and one small flower has dropped upon my bosom. And the splashing of water drops in the marble fountain comes down the garden paths, the dripping never stops. Underneath my stiffened gown is the softness of a woman bathing in a marble basin, a basin in the midst of hedges grown so thick she cannot see her lover hiding, but she guesses he is near, and the sliding of the water seems the stroking of a dear hand upon her. What is summer in a fine brocaded gown? I should like to see it lying in a heap upon the ground, all the pink and silver crumpled up upon the ground. I would be the pink and silver as I ran along the paths, and he would stumble after, bewildered by my laughter. I should see the sun flashing from his sword-hilt, and the buckles on his shoes, I would choose to lead him in a maze along the patterned paths, a bright and laughing maze for my heavy-booted lover, till he caught me in the shade, and the buttons of his waistcoat bruised my body, as he clasped me, aching, melting, unafraid. With the shadows of the leaves, and the sun-drops, and the plopping of the water-drops, all about us in the open afternoon, I am very like to swoon with the weight of this brocade, 
for the sun sifts through the shade underneath the fallen blossom in my bosom is a letter i have hid it was brought to me this morning by a writer from the duke madam we regret to inform you that lord hartwell died in action thursday seen night as i read it in the white morning sunlight the letters squirmed like snakes any answer madam said the footman no i told him see that the messenger takes some refreshment no no answer and i walked into the garden up and down the patterned paths in my stiff correct brocade the blue and yellow flowers stood up proudly in the sun each one i stood upright too held rigid to the pattern by the stiffness of my gown up and down i walked up and down in a month he would have been my husband in a month here underneath this lime he would have broken the pattern he for me and i for him he as colonel i as lady on this shady seat he had a whim that sunlight carried blessing and i answered it shall be as you have said now he is dead in summer and in winter i shall walk up and down the patterned garden paths in my stiff brocaded gown the squills and the daffodils will give place to pillared roses and to asters and to snow i shall go up and down in my gown gorgeously arrayed boned and stayed and the softness of my body will be guarded from embrace by each button hook and lace for the man who should loose me is dead fighting with the duke in flanders in a pattern called a war christ what are patterns for End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rubies by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. They brought me rubies from the mine and held them to the sun. I said, they are drops of frozen wine from Eden's vats that run. I looked again. I thought them hearts of friends to friends unknown. Tides that should warm each neighboring life are locked in sparkling stone. But fire to thaw that ruddy snow, to break enchanted ice, and give love's scarlet ties to flow. When shall that sun arise? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Self Reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Henceforth, please, God, for ever I forego the yoke of men's opinions. I will be light-hearted as a bird, and live with God. I find him in the bottom of my heart. I hear continually his voice therein. The little needle always knows the north. The little bird remembereth his note. And his wise seer within me never errs. I never taught it what it teaches me. I only follow when I act aright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Squirrel at Kyle Nagno by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. Come play with me. Why should you run through the shaking tree as though I'd a gun to strike you dead, when all I would do is to scratch your head and let you go? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Moods from the Hill by Ernest Benchamal read for LibriVox.org by Brian Ness. 1. Youth 
I love to watch the world from here, for all the numberless living portraits that are drawn upon the mind, far over the sea, fronting the sand, a few great yellow dunes, a salt marsh stumbling after, rank and green, with brackish gullies wandering in between, all this from the hill. And more, a clump of dwarfed and twisted cedars, sentinels over the marsh, and bright with the sun a field of daisies wandering in the wind, as though a hidden serpent glided through, a broken wall, a new ploughed field, and then the dusty road and the abodes of men surrounding the hill. How small the enclosure is wherein there lives each phase and passion of life, the distant sail dips in the limpid bosom of the sea, from that far place to where in state the turf raises a throne for me upon the hill. Each little love and lust of a living thing can thus be compassed in a rainbow ring and seen from the hill. 2. Age Why did I build my cottage on a hill facing the sea? Why did I plan each terraced lawn to slope down to the deep blue billowy breast of hope surging and sweeping, laughing and leaping, tumbling its garments of foam upon the shore, rustling the sands that know my step no more, I should have found a valley deep and still to shelter me. There flows the river, and it seems asleep so far away, yet I remember whip of wave and roar of wind that rose and smote against the oar, smote and retreated, proud but defeated, while I rejoiced and rode into the brine, drawing on wet and heavy straining line, the great cod quivering from the deep as counterplay. What is the solace of these hills and vales that rise and fall? What is there glorious in the greenwood glen, or twittering thrush, or wing of darting wren? Give me the gusty, raucous and rusty call of the seagull in the echoing sky, the wild shriek of the winds that cannot die. Give me the life that follows the bending sails, or none at all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Which Are You? by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. There are two kinds of people on earth today. Just two kinds of people, no more, I say. Not the sinner and saint, for it's well understood. The good are half bad, and the bad are half good. Not the rich and the poor, for to rate a man's wealth, you must first know the state of his conscience and health. Not the humble and proud, for in life's little span, who puts on vain airs, is not counted a man. Not the happy and sad, for the swift flying years bring each man his laughter and each man his tears. No, the two kinds of people on earth I mean are the people who lift and the people who lean. Wherever you go, you will find the earth's masses are always divided in just these two classes. And oddly enough, you will find too, I ween, there's only one lifter to twenty who lean. In which class are you? Are you easing the load of overtaxed lifters who toil down the road? Or are you a leaner who lets others share your portion of labor and worry and care? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.